All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, on to another day. Uh, okay, so, a few people have asked me um, how I do my lightning holes and how I drill the hole. Um, if you look at a lot of uh, things online, they all say I oh, use a um, fly cutter. Um, fly cutters don't work, they just um, chatter. Uh, on the drill press too, you don't have enough grunt on the drill, drill press. So the other way to do it is with a hole saw, but what you'll find is your drill press won't have enough grunt, especially for such a big hole. So the reason your drill press won't have enough grunt is if you imagine your drill press is going to be drilling down dead square, which means all these teeth are actually in contact all the time. So as they're all trying to cut, they're all trying to cut at once. Um, that's the problem you'll find with a drill press. Unless you can tilt your drill press slightly, that's the other trick, but even so, your drill press won't have enough grunt. Um, then I tried the trusty old drill on here. It worked, but um, blew up a couple of drills. So the best thing I've found is rotary hammer drill. And when you're drilling, you go down and you start on, on an angle. And what that does is, as it drills through, it, you've only got a little bit of teeth touching the surface all at once. And as that goes through, it will then pick up more teeth and start cutting further around. And it is really quick. Um, you don't get any chatter. This here is being drilled. Uh, no deburring or anything. I haven't deburred it. It's basically straight off um, this setup that I use. Um, you've got to have timber underneath it. So you lay it down on the timber. You drill down and you drill in on an angle and it will uh, cut a really nice neat hole for you. So I'll get into doing one. I'll show you. It looks dangerous. It's not. Trust me. Um, the key is when you've got it, when you've got the part down on the timber, you need your foot has to be against the side that will stop it from turning. That's the uh, the key. And then the other, the actual grip, um, rotary hammer drill, is against your leg. It's also got a clutch in this hammer drill, so if it actually grabs, it will uh, just stop, and you'll hear it like vibrate. So. I'll get into it, I'll drill one, I'll show you how I do a, um, a really good, nice hole. I'll try and simulate if, I, if it grabs, we'll get into it. All right, so here's the drill. Big rotary hammer drill, runs quite slow, which is really good, it's what you want. Um, this is drilled heaps of holes now. And uh, I've pre-drilled where I want it, so I just line up that center pilot hole uh, drill bit through. And one foot, this foot here, has to go. So it's going to spin this way. So you want that foot there to stop it spinning. This here, I'll just line it up on the hole. So this here against your leg, like that, you can adjust it to where you want. That's against your leg, so if it grabs, all it's going to do is just hit your leg. This one here is stopping it from spinning. And have it on a slight angle. And that's it. So, really nice. Really nice cut. Nice and clean. Cuts through really quick. No, uh, no issues at all. I'll try and simulate if it grabs. So I'll do another one. So that's all that happens if it grabs. Okay. There's another one. Nice and easy, nice and clean. And uh, it's quite safe to do it. I know when I had a um, fly cutter in the drill press, that thing was flying around and uh, grabbing parts and chattering and 
I figured that there's got to be a better way of doing it. So uh, that's what I've come up with. If anyone else out there has got any uh, other ways of doing it, let us know and um, I'll give it All a right. go. Get us get to sit down for uh, a minute. So six minutes, or oh, maybe 10 minutes I was done. Uh, 16 holes, both sizes, really easy. So I have so I've shown these on a previous video, but for those that haven't seen, these here are just MDF flaring dies that I made up. All I used was a router on a um, a pivot to get the circle. It's got a 45 degree angle there. It's got the matching mating surface in there. Now these will take a bit of flaring because they're a one mil sheet, but uh, all I do is slide that in, that matches up with the other side and uh, you can put them in a press but I don't have a press here uh, so just a few hits with the hammer don't hit your fingers uh, nice flare stiffens it up Um, this is what I'm working on today, working on the interior, um, the panel, and uh, just getting it all organised. So this is what I've got. I've just put a, a chair just to sit in there just so I can um, work in there and also work out where my pedals are going. So this here, this, this wall um, stiffens up the front the front of the hull but also uh, hides all the landing gear mechanism pedals will be down here going across now what I've done I don't know if you can see it in the camera but the floor has a slight fall both sides so it falls slightly to the middle only ever so slightly but that's because when this is all fixed in I want to be able to wash this out so I all the seats and everything are all going to be um, waterproof so that I can get a hose in here and actually wash out um, if I've got any sand or um, salt water in it. So that's why the floor is actually falling to the centre. There'll be another one on here with drain holes that will then drain into there and back, back out through uh, the bung out the back. All right, guys. So... Uh... I'm sitting in it, just uh, testing out, making aeroplane noises, that sort of thing. Now I just want to make sure that where the dash is sitting, uh, it's not going to be in the way. I can still reach it. Uh, I'm sitting on just a makeshift chair that I've put in here at the moment. But uh, as you can see, huge amounts of room. I can't even touch the other side of the plane. Oh, I can just touch it, just touch it. Um, so massive, wide, roomy cabin. This here is the uh, the dash and where my feet are going to be underneath. Pedals down there. Heaps of room for instruments. I can still reach the panel. I'm stretching a bit to go all the way across. But uh, if I lean forward, I can reach there as well. So this side here might be good for a um, just a screen or something. So you don't have to reach over too far. So all these um, all these uprights here, I actually they're glued as well as riveted. So they're sealed with a polyurethane sealant, then put together and riveted. So they're primed first then polyurethane and riveted together so you can see it just bleeds out that as well is going to make it a lot stronger being a glue so it's essentially gluing it together and then rivets as well um, and the reason i'm doing that is anything where it's wood line so um, where water can get to it and i'm riveting i'm using a polyurethane sealant between the two joints as well and then as i'm putting the rivets in 
the rivets are getting coated with polyurethane as well so um, there shouldn't be any leaks anywhere. So for those who have just joined and haven't watched any of the other videos I'll put a photo here. This is what it looked like uh, a week or two weeks ago. I've pulled all the uh, top off so that I can get to it and just do a few more things inside but um, that's what it looks like just to give you an idea and uh, be sure to check out the other videos. Okay so here you can see inside to inside is 1100 mil and that's uh, halfway through the cabin so at your shoulders 1 meter 90 so the dash is 1 meter 65 wide and uh, 280 mil high so that gives you a, a good idea as to the size so under here this is where I'll have a um, electrical tray so I'm gonna have a tray from there across a bit like I did in the cruiser and uh, that way I can put all the um, computer for the fuel injection and uh, all the engine information system wiring and all that sort of stuff there's a fair bit of wiring so it's good to have a tray so I'll have this under there and it's all nicely hidden out the way and then I'll just run the cable down and out to the back and up to the engine so uh, nice and simple It'll be nice and easy to get to too so I'll just uh, keep this off rivet this on at the end so I can do all the wiring just standing next to the plane it's gonna make it nice and easy this here this is all still left for access for the retract system so uh, that um, will just be left open so you can do a pre-flight through the windscreen because the windscreen is basically here so you can do a pre-flight through the windscreen check out make sure everything's good and uh, if I need to do any maintenance or anything on it, this screen, a uh, few screws, this screen comes off and completely uh, able to access it. So maintenance should be really simple. So that's it for another week. Thanks for following along and uh, I will catch you on the next one. I've got some cleaning to do.